businesses that you can easily start here I have done a video like this oh but that was years ago that's probably like I'm gonna guess like four years ago maybe something like that perhaps I don't know but anyway, maybe I'll link it here I don't know if I talked about the same things I can't remember but anyway and I have a different audience I have a lot of new subscribers so it's good to revisit these things anyway so I'm gonna just jump straight into the video so today, like I said, we're going to be talking about five businesses that you can start that are fairly low cost. Now, the first one that I have for you is Airbnb. Now, obviously, there's a couple of there are a couple of these that I've done. I'm doing myself, so it makes it easy to talk about. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking it's not cheap to do Airbnb to set up Airbnb. It depends on how you're going to do it, right? Because there are different ways that you can do have an Airbnb business here. You don't actually have to own the property. Obviously, if you can, if you already have a house and you can build maybe like a like something small, like a one bedroom or something like that, it's going to pay off. Although you're initially going to fork out to have the structure built and to kit it out and all of that eventually it's going to pay off and obviously if there are periods where you don't have anyone in there it's not going to cost you a thing because you already own it right so 100 profit more or less now if you can't do that it might actually be worth because there are so many houses in Ghana you'll be surprised how many houses are just sitting empty now if i was moving here and i wanted to get into the business i would start thinking where can I find a pretty, like a good apartment, a good place for someone to live that's perhaps not done up? It's in a good location, so I'd look at locations that are close to Accra because obviously Accra is very fast paced. Well, kind of. <laughs> um, I'd look for something that is reasonable that's just not done up. And you can see that all it is is it needs a lick of paint. A few things moved around here or there and you can beautify the place I would absolutely go for something like that I would definitely invest a little bit of money in order to bring some of these properties up to a level that's acceptable because let's let's face it sometimes we have a good eye for what other people want right especially if you're trying to reach the diaspora market right you have an eye that perhaps other people don't necessarily have and so you can utilize that to your advantage so you find a place that you can see the potential in that perhaps other people haven't. Go in there, do it up, get yourself a few things. If you need to buy a sofa, if you need to buy a TV, whatever it is, go get that apartment, do it up and put it on Airbnb, rent it. Rent it like it's your own. Obviously, this is kind of subletting, so maybe you'd need to get permission to be able to do that, okay? so be warned before you just go get an apartment and you know do it and then the landlord's not happy with you think about it first some people are, are actually happy for you to do that they don't care as long as they've got what they've asked for if they've asked you for six months rent and it is i don't know five thousand cities a month or whatever it whatever it is and you pay that front they don't they don't really care as long as you give it back to them in good condition some people are even happy for you to do that because once you've done that they're like oh my gosh you've just done up the whole apartment for them so you can definitely do that airbnb is a really nice way to make some money um especially if it's on the side i wouldn't say use that as your bread and butter i wouldn't say use it as your bread and butter for like your everyday living because you know there are going to be seasons during airbnb where you know it's going to be a dry period like right now we're heading into christmas and so you know things are good right now but you know there's there's likely to be somewhere along the line there's likely to be a little bit of a drought so be prepared for things like that so obviously if you have rented out you need to be prepared for that maybe there are a couple of months where you may not get your money back so plan for that do, do a nice little plan for yourself so that 
you're not living like month to month. If this isn't rented out for 30 days of the month, then I'm gonna be in trouble, I would have lost. No, 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 make sure you've calculated your losses. Think about what you've put, your investment that you've put in, think about what you're gonna potentially get back out, your overheads, all of that. Just calculate it really, really well to make sure you're making a good profit in order for it to be lucrative for you. And if you're smart, you can repeat the process several times. So obviously, the more properties that you have, the less risk there is for you. So if you have 10 Airbnbs the way you do that, right, you're less likely to be hit in some sense, right? You're less likely to be hit because you've kind of like even out your playing field. So if two have no occupancy and the other eight do, it kind of is able to balance it out a bit. You know what I'm saying? You just have to be very smart. So you look for properties which are not too bougie already and are a little bit lower down. So if it's 2,000 cities a month that the person's asking for, do that thing up and make it look like that place is 10,000 cities a month. Whatever you gotta do, go in there, do it. Sometimes you may have to change the toilet, you may have to change the sink or whatever. Those are going to be your overheads, but you will definitely get it back in rent if you can make that place look better than what it is. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not here to insult anyone, but you know, our Ghanaian brothers and sisters, sometimes we like a lot of color. So, you know, not everybody likes color. So go in and just whitewash that place and you will see the difference that it will make immediately. But anyway, that was number one. Number two, this is always my favorite story. I can talk about this all day long and that is blogging. <laughs> Blogging has been so, 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 so good to me. It really has. It enabled me to kind of like, because I had, I definitely had some shaky moments here in Ghana financially and having blogging really, really helped me. I mean, if you know anything about blogging, in fact, any industry that you want to go into, this is the one thing that people say. Oh, that market is saturated now. You can't do that anymore because, you know, everybody's doing it now. So it's going to be harder for you to do it. Da, 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 da. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I always believe it's never too late to get into something, okay? Maybe the game has changed a bit. Maybe you may have to work a bit harder. Your strategies may have to be different. But it's never too late to get into something if you're going to be dedicated and fully committed to doing it. Now, the thing about blogging is it's not for everybody. But it can be extremely extremely lucrative oh my goodness i know people that blog that do like and i, I promise you i promise you i'm not exaggerating i'm not exaggerating people that do like twenty thousand a month dollars i'm not talking about saying dollars a month um some of the average people that i know do like maybe five ten a month and the thing about blogging is it's kind of passive because you don't have to be on it every day and that's the beauty of it when it comes to blogging if you write articles and you get your articles to rank right so you know when we all go to google we all use google pretty much every day you go in there you type on google how to braid your hair you get all these articles pop up right if you get your article up there yeah it it can bring in some really good revenue not only do you get revenue from advertisers that are going to be um, potentially advertising on your page, but you also get um, affiliate stuff as well. So you may promote something in there. You may link to an Amazon product and every time someone goes to your article, clicks on a product, you get commission on that. Now you don't just get commission on what the person bought, you get commission on everything that they bought. So they may have only bought, say like a bundle of hair, but then they bought a flat screen TV, they bought shoes, they bought whatever, you get commission on all of that. So if you get some posts to rank, you can make some pretty decent money on there. Now you might be wondering why more people don't do it. And there's a very good reason for that, I can tell you immediately why. It's because it's hard work and it doesn't pay at the beginning. When you start off blogging, you get nothing. In fact, you fork out money. You pay money for courses, you use your time, and you don't see any of that back. Some people, some people see their money back quite fast, and other people don't. Some, I know some people that have gone years and not made a single thing. But you know, if you're someone that can see the bigger goal and can keep pushing and keep going, you'll get there. You will get there. Like, I mean, I wasn't making those numbers, but... I was at one point making some really good money. Well, I say really good. I was doing, did I tell you how much I was making at one point? 
Okay, I wasn't making, I wasn't making, I wasn't making like loads of money, but at one point I was doing like about $3,000 a month, right? Now, the thing you have to understand about blogging is it can go like this, okay? So it's never, ever, ever a, a, like a smooth sailing ship. You're going to go through the tide. So there'll be times when you're like, this is amazing. And then what happens is Google comes along and does a shake up. He shakes up the articles because obviously you write a post, somebody else writes a post, sometimes their post can knock yours off, right? It will knock yours down the chain. And for every time it goes down the chain, because we all know, we all know the procedure, right? Go to Google, the first couple of articles are the ones at the top that you look at, you feel like those are the best. No, no one goes to page two. When was the last time you've been to page two on, on Google? It rarely happens, okay? So everything is on page one and the closer you are to the top, the better you are going to experience financial blessings. Let's put it that way. That's where you're going to see your financial blessings if you can get to number one. Now, blogging is very much a numbers game. The more quality, notice I said the word quality, the more quality articles you can put out there, the higher your chances of getting those posts to rank. Now, when you write posts um, for your website, not every post will rank and not every post necessarily has to rank in that world, which should be hopeful. But... For the most people, I would say, if you have 100 posts, maybe only 20 will rank, but those 20 can bring you in a hell of a lot of money if you've done it correctly. Now, I, I mean, I'm not gonna go too much. I mean, I, you can see the passion behind us to work blogging because I have gone so far into it. I started blogging in 2018 and I still do it today. Um, but it has been very up and down for me. Like I said, when Google comes and shakes things up, one minute it could be here, the next minute you're like, nothing i'm getting nothing but you have to keep persevering but like i said before the beauty about blogging is you don't have to do it all the time it never has to be consistent i've gone months without even touching my blog and every month i still get some money coming through on it that's just how it is but i think one of the things i would say about blogging is that if you're going to be a hundred percent serious about it you need to grow a team because you cannot you get to a point where you cannot do everything yourself you cannot do the research, do the writing, polish it, all of that, promote, you can't do all of it by yourself. So if you want to fast pace and get to those people that are making like 50, 100 grand a month on their blogs, yeah, you need to expand your team. So you need to have a, a view of being able to do that. So you need to definitely have some type of plan if you're going to do that. But like I said, blogging can be very, 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 very lucrative, but be prepared for those tides because they definitely do cut. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> the next one, event planning. Now, I haven't done event planning, but let me tell you this. I have been to so many events and I cannot tell you how poorly some of these events are. They are planned so awfully. Now, let me just tell you the real, please. Please don't be offended by every single little thing I say. Please, it's not that deep. I'm just telling the truth from what, how I see it. So please, just don't go too deep, right? Someone will do a flyer. The flyer looks amazing. You think, oh my gosh, this event is going to be completely banging. Everybody's going to be there. It's, they're running it as a sponsored ad. It looks beautiful. Whoever did the artwork on this flyer did an A-class job. You turn up to the event. First of all, it doesn't start on time. The DJ's still setting up, and you already came two hours like the DJ's still setting up. There's still people running around, but there's nothing. No one's even there. It's empty. And then you stay for a couple of hours, the place is still empty. No one has come. Nothing, nothing is organized. They said there was meant to be food. There's no food. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. I'm talking from my own personal experience. So don't come for me. Just my own personal experience. I've seen it. Event planning is so important. Sometimes I think people think that, oh, if I do the flyer and I tell so and so to turn up on this day and that, you need you need an event planner to help you to make sure that you are working with the right people to make sure that your event can be a success. Now, if you can be an event planner and do things the right way, build those contacts, and you get known for being an event planner. You can pull in some good money and it's not something that's a huge investment. Low startup costs. Low startup costs. Get yourself a name and do it well. Do it.
do your job well get to know people get to know businesses that you can trust are reliable sometimes the thing about event planning is that you're going to be doing a lot of micromanaging so if you are a patient person and you can do all of that then perhaps that's a route that you could take event planning because lord knows we need it here Woo! we definitely need it here because mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, i have a bit like mm -mm, <laughs> Like you may think that, okay, I'm gonna get such and such to do the catering for me and da, 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 and it'll be fine. Don't ever assume anything. Don't assume anything. You need someone who's gonna be on top of it. The same way that you plan your wedding and you make you get a, like a wedding plan and make sure everything's down to a T, that's the same way you need to look at event planning. Because believe me, believe me, it happens. You need someone to understand the intricacies of Ghana too, right? So there may like you may have an event because this has happened and i kid you not people plan events right and they don't realize that that's the month where um you're not allowed to play music in a particular area but you planned an event that's supposed to be like a music festival and you've done it and you're not allowed to put the music up what's happened to the event do you know how many events get cancelled right just before they're supposed to happen here so many for one reason or another. I'm not gonna even like. I mean, sometimes it's out of your control. Let's be real. Sometimes that, and sometimes it was fully your fault. They get cancelled because someone hasn't done something that they're supposed to be to do. So if you're an event planner, you can plan it well, and you can get the contacts, and you're happy to micromanage and all of that. That is for you. Okay, that's for you. <laughs> this one's very dear to my heart. Videography. Mm, mm, mm. Now, let me tell you something. You think videography would be something that, you know, someone will just go to school for, study, and they'll come out, they know how to use a camera, and... I'm going to shake my head one more time so you understand what I'm saying. I've had so many videographers. I've had so many videographers. And for one reason or another, it has not worked out. Uh, I'm not gonna go into every single detail, but let's just say you can go back and look at my past videos and sometimes you can see it, sometimes you may not see it because it's something different, but there has always been one issue or another. And it's not just me. I can fully with my chest speak for all of us content creators out here we have a problem now i'm not saying that you need to come with your camera and be a videographer because honestly us youtubers tell you we don't have money like that we, we can't pay you two thousand dollars three thousand dollars a month for you to come and film for us because some of us don't make that so we can't do that do you know what i'm saying so what i'm saying is if you know videography and you can train and have people under you. You have yourself a business. We will buy from you, crowd. We will buy from you, please. We will buy from you. Listen, if you can manage a team and you, you're happy to micromanage them, like you make sure that they go in, they check the sound. They're actually doing what they're supposed to do. You can do some amazing things here. So once you train your team so that they are excellent, excellent, right? You've got yourself something right there. You've got yourself something right there. Train them, train them like when they're just coming out of school. Train them to know how to use the camera properly and how to listen to what the client wants and be able to execute it. Now, these are some of the things that videographers do. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just speaking in general terms here again. The quality is terrible. The sound is terrible. The, the, the colour looks awful. They don't know how to colour grade. They haven't listened. The person is talking and then the person moves here. The camera has stayed here. The person has gone off camera now. All you can hear is the person's voice and the person is not on camera. I mean, you know, there's like... Get it. <laughs> honestly like ooh, especially when you're the person in front of the camera you don't have time to micromanage honestly speaking i'm being real here you don't have time to micromanage you don't have time because you're already processing your your own self 
you're trying to manage your own self um you know like am i dressed okay you know is my hair okay am i do i know what i'm going to be saying okay i need to start here i need to end i need to make sure i mention this i don't want to forget it, but if you're like me i may mean, i forget people's names obviously i do sometimes i have to secretly go and say what's that person's name i have to go and ask somebody because i can't remember and so we're all trying we're trying to retain this information now we can't be retaining this information meanwhile you are doing something that you're not so you haven't checked something you haven't done something we can't be micromanaging you as well it's too much is too much so we need someone who can help us <laughs> and i'm not just talking about us youtubers i'm talking about in anything that people do what tv present whatever it is whatever it is honestly we need really good camera guys we need to these camera guys to step up their game honestly we are suffering over here i kid you not like Sometimes I wish I could just duplicate myself so I can be behind the camera and hear. I'm not even a videographer. I just shoot with my phone. I mean, I don't even, like, sometimes even the one the videos I've done with my phone have come out better than the ones where someone's got a $5,000 camera just because, just because. <laughs> it, can, you see, can you feel the pain that I'm having here? Just because. So if you're a videographer and you can manage a team, you can grow a team, you can have an amazing business. Just come put the clauses in that you need to do, make sure it's watertight so that when you train the person, they can't just leave once they've got the skills from you and go somewhere, work for someone. Just make sure you put all of that in there and you're good to go, okay. Now, the last one I would say is digital marketing. Yeah, let's talk about digital marketing. Now, digital marketing, again, very, very low cost. In fact, most of these, apart from maybe Airbnb, you can be a bit like this with it. But most of these are very low cost to start. Digital marketing, marketing. Now, the reason I say digital marketing is <sighs> I need a minute. Most people do not know how to market their businesses here. They don't. Most of the things most of the um hmm. so when you see something with something good it's usually come from word of mouth word of mouth here is so much stronger than what a person advertises and that's a very good reason for that because sometimes people put themselves out there and their service is rubbish they, they're sorry their service is rubbish now and it's not even because they've done an amazing advert it's not even that it's because people don't know how to advertise themselves you have a product you have an amazing product that solves a multitude of problems for people the headache is gone you don't need to think about it but they don't know how to market themselves so all we're going on is word of mouth now i may have a problem and because I don't know what your problem is, I found a solution for mine and we have the same problem, but because I don't know what your problem is, I've never mentioned it to you. Meanwhile, I have, this, I have the solution here. People are not able to market themselves properly. They have something amazing and they just don't know how to get out there to the masses. I'm going to say this and this might hurt some of you, please. The number of times I'm on Instagram and I can tell you wholeheartedly, I see something that's amazing and I think, yes, I'm going to buy this. I look at it, it's Nigeria. Okay, okay, it's Nigeria. I can't, I can't. Then I keep scrolling. I find another one. Yes, exactly. It's, it's Nigeria. Oh my gosh. Okay. I can't find the Ghanaian ones because the Ghanaian ones look terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't come. Please, please, please. please. Please hear from my heart what I'm saying. I'm saying it so that you get better. I'm not saying it to trash you. I'm saying it so you get better, please. Honestly, like, you may have an amazing product, but your advertising is terrible. You can't come onto the screen and be like, shall I do an example? <laughs> shall I do an example? Okay, I'll do an example. Yes, everybody, it's me again. I have the cup that you all need. This cup is very, very good for you, eh? You won't go wrong if you have this cup. Wow! Wake up in the morning and you have this cup. It's brilliant for you. Come and buy from me. Come and buy from me. You won't be disappointed. Come and buy from me. Is that how to sell it? And the volume is loud like that. I'm sorry. Please, 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 please don't come for me. <laughs> but now you'll see that the Nigerian ones will say they'll do something a bit more 
a bit a bit better so I'm like yeah um so i'm selling the, we have these cups for sale they're amazing they keep your drinks nice and hot you can completely fill these up these are 500 mils they come as a set of six this is the purchase price if you order more we can give you a discount and did it the information that you actually need not dm me for the price but that's another video but anyway, you see the difference and so i like the minute i click on one of those ads and i hear yes it's me again shelly come to my stop like i just i just i just we need help with digital marketing honestly because it's not to say that the services are not here it's to say that those services are not being promoted in the right way they don't know how to reach the right people i don't know how businesses can survive on just word of mouth alone we're in an era where everything is digital no one wants to go travel to all the way to jolu to a shop to see if what they have is what you're looking for ain't nobody got time for it nobody we just want to open up our phones and look for it and it's it's so interesting that most of the things that you want to buy if you want to find where it is we don't go to google here we go to instagram not google you try going to into to google right and looking for some business through google you won't find it you have to go to instagram that's where the results are better but even on instagram sometimes you don't get what you want or sometimes they take three days to come back to you. by that time your product you don't need it anymore do you know what i mean things like that is so hard you can google go to google and search i don't know something like um salt and pepper mills for sale whatever, whatever it is no searches so you have to go to instagram you have to think about the kind of shops that maybe sell that and then you have to start scrolling through all the items and then you realize that this was a year ago like you can't find things please we need help with our digital marketing we need help to get our businesses out there so that they can be seen we need to step up the game so if you're into digital marketing we need your help here believe me believe me but anyway that's pretty much it I'm sure there are a ton of other things that I could have said. Um, okay, I'm just going to run through some ones that I wrote down here, but I'm not going to go into them in depth. In depth, yeah? So, like, I've, I've touched on everybody, but, like, selling stuff on Instagram. Sometimes looking for clothes here is a problem. Like, nice clothes. I find in my personal experience, my personal experience, if I'm looking for something on Instagram to buy, right, they're all shaped of women with big booties. But Charlie, not all of us have big booty. We don't have the booty, the thighs. We don't all have that. So please, for some of us, we're, we're small friends. So we need that kind of, you know, clothes that will fit us like that. Like create a market for the rest of us. So most times I can't buy my stuff from Instagram or I have to get it sent here. And now, you know, there are businesses here where you can, um, you can order your stuff online. It goes to an address in the West or whatever, and the person brings it here for you. Whatever, there are different ways to do that. Sell on Instagram, clothes, easy to set up. If you bring decent stuff and you promote yourself properly, you can make some good money from that. You can use the same thing to sell even food items too. I mean, I go in there sometimes, there are a few people that sell stuff that I am. Like sometimes if I'm looking for like cereal or stuff like that, I find it on Instagram because there are shops on Instagram that sell cereal biscuits, you know, the little things that you probably crave from the West. They sell it here on Instagram sometimes. Um, a home tutoring business would be a good one as well. If you're a great home tutor, I'm not saying you have to do the home tutoring because probably there's not enough, there may not be enough money on it, but get yourself people under you that you can train and spread them out and be known for being the best home tutoring school. So you may have five people under you, get them to go out and do what they need to do. Train them so they know how to interact with people, the do's and the don'ts. You know, you don't want home tutors coming to your house and then, and then, and do you know what I mean? Because someone like me, I'm, I'm a germaphobe, like, I'll be immediately like, stop! You got to go, you got to go. Like, I, 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 can't, I, I can't take that, sorry. So train them, yeah? The little things that you think people don't need training up, they need training up. I'm not gonna say anything else. Um, <laughs> even farming, poultry farming, things like that. Great business to start, okay? 
I mean, what are us black people known for? We like chicken, man. We like chicken. Let's be real. We like chicken. We like it all different ways. We like the wings. We like the thighs. We like ev we like everything. Poultry farming. Get the eggs. You know, start small, expand, see how it goes for you. Little things like that. But anyway, that's it. I'm not gonna say anymore. I did have a whole list, but I'm not going through the whole list. But yeah, so let me know in the comment section what you guys think about those ideas that I've just presented to you. Um, have you tried any of them? I would love to know if some of you have tried any, any of them and how it's gone for you. Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Did you find that you had to maybe pivot a little bit? Let me know in the comment section. I'm very, very, very much interested. And also, let me know what else you would like me to talk about. I'm up for talking right now. I feel a little talkative. So if there's something you want me to discuss on camera, drop it in the comment section and I will do my best to meet you at your point of need. And that's the end of today's video. Okay, so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Don't forget to also 